Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. If this video helps you, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It is greatly appreciated and it really helps. Let's get to the video. Let's talk about how we can write a rule for a sequence. So in a previous video, we talked about how we can extend a sequence or write the terms of a sequence. And I'll put that video at the end of this one. So it says, when the terms of a sequence have a recognizable pattern, you may be able to write a rule for the nth term of the sequence. So we're gonna jump down in, do three examples here in this video. So let's start off with number one. So notice we have one, three and a half, or not three and a half, three halves, three over two, two, and then five over two. So if we think about our terms here, let's try and rewrite our first term. So like a sub one, and let's write it as one plus one over two, right? Because one plus one would be two, so this is still two over two, which would be equal to one, which is what our first term is, right? So now let's look at the next term. Let's say for the second term we did two plus one divided by two. So now we have three over two, right? Which is what we see. For the third term, what if we did three plus one over two? So now we get four over two, which is equal to two. And then for our fourth term, four plus one over two, which is equal to five over two. So look at what we are doing. We're taking n or whatever position, whatever term we're trying to find. We're adding one and then we're dividing by two. So we could write the nth term as a sub n equals n plus one over two, right? And then we could use that rule to find whatever uh, position term that we wanna find in the sequence. All right, look at number two. So for two, we have zero, three, eight, 15. Well, if you notice those numbers, they're really close to some perfect squares, right? What if that said one, four, nine, 16? Oh, well, we'd go, okay, we're just doing one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared so on and so forth. Well, it looks like we're doing that, but then what are we doing? We're subtracting one, right? So we could write this as a sub one equals one squared minus one, which would be zero. A sub two would be two squared minus one, which would be three, because two squared is four, four minus one is three. Three squared minus one, so nine minus one. And lastly, four squared minus one, so that would be 15, right? So there's our pattern. So now we could write it as a sub n equals n squared minus one for number two, okay? And lastly, number three, notice what we do see here, right? What if this was one, four, nine, and 16? Okay, then we're just squaring our numbers. Well, we have that, but it's 0.2 at the end, right? So we're just adding 0.2 as we square. So our first term would be one squared plus 0 0.2, so 1.2. Our second term would be two squared plus 0 0.2, so 4.2. Third term would be three squared plus 0.2, so 9.2. And our fourth term would be four squared plus 0 0.2, so 16.2. So now for our nth term, we could say a sub n is equal to n squared plus 0 0.2, okay? So that's how when we have a recognizable pattern in our sequence, we can write a rule for that sequence.